guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Yolanda Melody. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a very important topic, which is food shortages. There are many, many videos explaining why food shortages could be something that we're all experiencing in the near future. From the research that I've done personally and words of warning from local farmers, I am of the belief that food shortages are imminent. And before anybody accuses me of fear mongering, that's really not what I'm trying to do. In fact, I could spend this entire video showing you all the research and the reasons as to why this may be happening. Maybe I'll do that in the future. But when I was planning my video, I thought, it's way more important to just tell people all the practical tips on how they can prepare. So essentially this is a video for the people who know what's going on, as opposed to trying to wake people up. With everything that we've seen for the past two years, I really would say at this point that anything is possible. And isn't it just better to be prepared for these things to happen as opposed to resting on your laurels and thinking that everything's gonna be fine and then suddenly everything falls apart and you're just left high and dry. I don't wanna be in that situation and I'm sure that neither do you. In addition to food shortages, there is also something that's happening right now that everybody can agree on, and that is inflation. Inflation is another factor to bear in mind throughout this whole video, because all of the tips that I'm about to give will save you money in the long run and soften the blow of the inflation that is happening right now. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so I see so many channels talking about growing your own food. Everybody's recommending it. And I'm not gonna pretend that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to growing your own food because I myself personally have not got to that stage yet. And I know that there are so many people that either haven't got the resources or for whatever reason, they're not able to grow food right now. However, if you do have the resources, there are plenty of channels that walk you through the whole process and give so much good advice when it comes to growing your own food. So be sure to check them out. And as I progress on my journey, you know that I'm gonna be sharing my tips with you guys as well. And if you've been following all of my videos, you'll know that I'm starting out with baby steps. Right now, I'm just learning how to look after plants. <laughs> so the growing aspect isn't my forte, but one thing that I'm really good at is being organized. And this is where you need to think, what are my skills? What am I really good at? And use those skills to your advantage. So my biggest tip in all of this is obviously going to be stocking up. This is something that I believe everybody has the ability to do right now and you will thank yourself later for doing this. I'm not gonna recommend on YouTube that you go and raid the shelves. What I'm saying is every single shop that you do, just keep putting a little bit extra in. I have been doing this since 2020. When everything started kicking off, I did not hesitate to start putting the preparation in place. And I've continued to do so ever since. Because to me, this situation's not gonna calm down. It's only gonna get progressively worse. <laughs> but I'm not just gonna give a blanket statement of stock up. I'm gonna tell you all the best things to stock up on and also very importantly, how to keep your nutrients as high as possible, even during a shortage. So obviously one of the best things to stock up on is anything that has a long shelf life, anything tinned like beans, tinned veg, tuna, salmon, anything that resembles a natural food with a certain level of nutrients that is tinned. I know that fish is quite expensive. Beans, on the other hand, are a cheaper alternative. They both provide a lot of protein. And then a way to cover your carbs is to stock up on rice, pasta. Pasta's not gonna be my one. What I find is great is that you can get these massive, massive bags of rice. And I think that would be my apocalypse food, <laughs> personally, rice and beans. <laughs> Another thing that I would recommend, if you have the room and the resources, get a chicken, <laughs> all three. So I'm pescatarian, but I do eat eggs. Eggs are another great source of protein. It's not essential, but it would help. Luckily, I don't drink cow's milk, but if you like things like soya, soya milk has a longer shelf life 
much longer. There's types of soya that you can actually keep in the cupboard as opposed to the fridge. Obviously frozen food is also a good idea. However, if they were to turn the grid off or an increase of power cuts, you might wanna make sure that you have a generator. And also important thing, I would recommend to purchase books with information on how to grow things in the event of a grid shut off or the internet getting cut off. You don't need the internet to read a book. <laughs> Sadly, I don't have any recommendations for you guys, but if I find a decent book, I will link it in the description below, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, this is a really, really big one that I don't think anybody is gonna be talking about. This is my nutrition hack. If people in the war were prepared with these things, I think that they would feel a lot healthier and more energetic during those times. A lot of people envisage that if there was a food shortage, we would all have to suffer on rations and really plain food with not a lot of nutrients. Some people might envisage themselves eating pot noodles every day and that's just... Mm. So my number one tip is to stock up on powdered superfoods. So to my current subscribers, this is not gonna be any surprise, but if you've been following along with the series, you'll know that you can get so much nutrition from these powdered superfoods. And I personally would be totally fine if my main meals weren't as nutrient dense, at least I would know that I would be getting a high amount of nutrients from shots of these powders. It's like just taking a shot of nutrition every day. So the superfoods that I would recommend are hemp seeds, spirulina, wheatgrass, cacao, chia seeds, maca. I've already posted individual videos about each one of these and more videos like that are on the way. Another thing that's so brilliant about these is that you can buy these in bulk by the kilogram. I usually buy five kilogram packs at a time and when you look at the shelf life on these, some of them last for a year, some of them three years, four. <laughs> I also think that they're really good value for money. Now I know I'm starting to sound like I'm sponsored here, I'm not, although that would be very good if I was. <laughs> The supplier that I use all the time is Seven Hills Whole Foods. I think that's what they're called. I'll pop up a picture on the screen. <laughs> and last but not least, bit of a weird one. If you're already subbed to my channel, you'll already know this, but I would recommend to stock up on magnesium, as in magnesium flakes or more commonly known as Epsom salts. Magnesium is actually one of the most important nutrients for our body to work efficiently. Magnesium deficiency can cause an array of illnesses. If you want to know more about this, I've done an entire video two videos actually. <laughs> one about magnesium deficiency and the other one is about how to make your own magnesium spray for the skin. So I know that this is a very dark subject to talk about and while I do take it very seriously, at the same time I thought that I'd deliver the message in a bit more of a light-hearted way because crying on the floor and wailing in sorrow is not gonna solve anything. <laughs> I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Please comment down below if you have any tips as well. And if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to drop it a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Love you, bye.